Five, four, three, two, one. It's the new Panic Room. It's the show other shows want to be, and the show that authors want to be on. Da! Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. It is, um, I, do, I, don't, I don't know when it is, to be honest. Uh, yes, it is. It's uh, 18th of April already. Uh, sort of, I don't know what the name is for the word. It's probably a prep special word for the day before Good Friday, but it's the day before Good Friday. And it is the New Panic Room episode 139. And it's all very exciting because uh, I don't have to get up early in the morning to get the kids to school for a start. So I can stay up really late tonight, which is nice. Um, and it's also exciting because I, I, I do get to, to chat to my old... Uh, to my, we, don't, we don't talk that often, probably, probably because she can't stand me, but, um, you know, we, we do, we, we, we sort of, you know, put, put aside our differences and, and, you know, put on a brave facade for a Thursday evening for an hour and a half, which is kind of, kind of jolly, but um, I'm, we're going we're gonna to bring her up. <laughs> How are you this evening, my dear? I'm doing really good, and I wanted to say that um, no, you're like one of my favorite people. That's uh, that's what I'm supposed to say, right? Is that what? You, yeah, I think that know, was in the that's in the you, script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think it's because we're gonna have to have it playing that music now. I, mean, I can't help it. It wouldn't be a show without it now. And you know, you can no, you can practically you can, you can smell the homemade bootleg distilleries and the meth labs, can't you? It, it, it's so it puts you it puts you right there and the do, and the donkeys and the donkeys. It does, which, it does. Um, you know, if you go outside, um, you can hear the donkeys sometimes. You, you can hear them, really. That's fantastic. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It is pretty cool, yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> well, you know, donkey no, donkey, you... isn't it? But, um, hmm. <laughs> so how are you? How you are you this week? You know, I'm uh, I'm I'm tired. I've had a long, 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 long and sort of exhausting day today. I mean, how 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 was your day? See, I'm, I think that's know, what it says here on the script. And it's, um, you had a nap. Yeah. What well, I could have I could have I, <laughs> I, yeah. I could I could have guessed at that. To be honest with you. <laughs> no, I had a nap. You know, I didn't get up until like noon and, you know, then I had a nap. So I am, this is like my peak time right now. <laughs> so, I've, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, been, I've yeah. been awake. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't sleep for crap last night because we, we had thunderstorms. Uh, but it, it, it's not the thunderstorms uh-huh. that wakes up. It, it's the notification, on my, the weather notifications on my phone. Um, 
pink literally every half an hour. It's been, and, oh, for fuck, what is that? Oh, it's it's raining. I don't give a shit. It's three in the morning. I'm in my bed. I don't give a fuck if it's raining. Thank you. But it was kind of worrying because yeah, yeah. sort of we, we had a big thunderstorm this morning and there was a, a flash of light and it sounded like a bomb going off literally under my seat. Oh, wow. And then I got this, I got this notification on my app. You know, light, lightning, has, <laughs> lightning, has, lightning has struck zero miles from your location. I said, yeah, I, I, th- I think it, it almost hit me. To be honest, it sounded like <laughs> it literally under my seat. It was just like, wow. Oh, that's yeah, that was pretty yeah. unfortunate. And then it all sort of blew over, and it was, it was, it was you know, the afternoon was quite jolly after that. Huh. So, yeah. So, um, um, so no, the consequence, I didn't sleep well last night. I'm tired. I've, I've got it, and after this, I've got, to, I've got to watch. I think, I think, I don't know if it's the penultimate or the finale of the Orville tonight. Oh yay! I'm so excited. <laughs> I knew you would. For you can't wait. Yeah. You can't wait to to rush yeah. off the air and sit and watch the old uh, because it is awesome. I, it is awesome. You know, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm subjected to this wonderful show, and um, I hate to say that it's actually growing on me a little bit, um, but, you know, it, it actually combines two of the things I probably hate, well, okay, hate is a strong word, but dislike the most as far as TV goes. I'm not a fan of sci-fi, and... Um, I don't really like spoof shows, and that's got it's both of them. And well, it's funny so, because you know. the, the season one, I think it started off as a bit of a spoof, and, and I think you know Seth was trying to put too much humor in it. And I think for people, I, I I enjoy it as a almost like as a continuation of, of, of the similar the theme of the first Star Trek series, which and I defy anybody to argue is still the best. Um, Mm-hmm. Although I did hear that they're bringing uh, the Jean-Luc Picard, the, uh, the next generation, uh, back. That's having a bit of resurgence oh, coming yeah. up. Um, you know, I think the season two, he's sort of eased back on trying to make it funny. It doesn't need to be funny. It's not a comedy. It is a damn good sci-fi. There's a few bit it, get, get, it just get a little bit preachy on some issues, you know, and it's almost like yeah. Yeah. it's shouting it in your face with a megaphone, you know. This is about the gay issue! <laughs> Yes, okay, yes, we've got that. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. Well done, mate. Well done. Yeah, we understand that. You know, because we've got these, these abortus <laughs> and he's, 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 oh, he's, oh, he's part. Oh, my God, he's so funny. He's I pretty, do like he's, Bortus, I do. <laughs> he's pretty, I can't remember what his, um, what's his partner's name? Crichton or something. Um, yeah. And they're both male and they're both sort of big macho male sort of characters, but, you know, they, they have this, this, but it, 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 that, it tends to hammer home. They had another Bortus episode just the other week. Yeah, that was a good I one, I thought. Like, where the, the it was girl... good, but it was, it was, it's him. Yes, I get it. Yeah, they don't have females. And females are second-class citizens. Mm-hmm. And, but, and it just, it's really pushing it a little bit for me. My, my favorite was the, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the doctor lady was having, a, having a mad, passionate affair with the, <laughs> the, the, the shiny robot man. Which was yes, um, that was interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I I wanted to. I I just. I was all. I had too many questions, to be honest, for that to really <laughs> enjoy that. To, as a biologist, yeah, um, speaking as yeah. a biologist, I, I just I just really needed to know <laughs> probably more than the show was going to let on. But um, yeah, definitely. Um, mm. I like the one where uh, in it was just like a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago or something. Uh, and I can't remember the guy's name. He's uh, he's got the reddish hair, or whatever. Um, he they they discovered that cell phone, and he you that know was good. Uh, his clips what's his character's that name? Was... He's um, Scott Grimes, yeah. is, is the actor. He, he also voices um, Steve in American Dad because obviously a lot of American Dad and Family Guy mm-hmm. actors pop up in this show. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, is it Gordon? Uh, but yeah, that was good where they found the the, the cell phone yeah. from sort of the two thousands, and, and yeah. that was and he, he fell in. I did, that was it was nice to see that take on you know like a futuristic take on today. Now, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. They, they, they you know they obviously got this this <laughs> top of the range smartphone, and they looked at it like like it was you know carved out of rock. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, that was, was, was good. Yeah. I, I like, yeah. That was imaginative. That that worked. But again, I think that that's probably been done on uh, on Star. There's a lot of the plot lines you can 
tra trace back to Star Trek. Big, big Star Trek fan of, of the original. I mean, Next Generation was all right. I, lo I do enjoy the movies, but, you know, I, 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 no, it was Kirk and Spock and the gang for me. You know, I, I grew up watching those guys, so... Uh, you know, sorry. You know, all speaking these of Kirk and Spock, bringing out new Star Trek, so it's just it's not it's just the issues in the name. It's just not it's not no. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Right. Right. Stop that. How about the new Twilight? Have you uh, are you watching the new Twilight at all, or any thoughts on have that? I have watched what? The the new Twilight that or Twilight Zone shows or oh, the Twilight Zone. Yeah, Twilight. The new, the new Twilight and Twilight Zone. Two completely different things. Yeah, two different I have. Yeah, I don't know. True. I don't know when the third episode is out. Um, I've seen the first oh, two of okay. the new one. I enjoyed them. I, I really. And they've got some great yeah. actors in it. Uh, it's nicely written. And it, 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 I like how they've got Jordan Peele is doing the narrator part, the the, the Rod Serling part, and he right. does really well. They, they, they've really captured the spirit of. Uh, the mm -hmm. Twilight Zone for me. They, they they did a resurgence back in the 1980s, and they had some big name um, directors. They had Spielberg, they had uh, uh, Landis, um, Joe Dante. They had some really big. You know, they were doing an episode each sort of thing, and they'd obviously thrown a lot of money at it. And there's big effects and all this, and it spoiled it. You know, the for me the essence of yeah, the Twilight Zone yeah. so, very much that it was done on a tiny budget. But it was about that. It was mm -hmm. effective. It was about the writing and the acting. And this new season of done that. Uh, the last one was uh, Nightmare at Thirty Thousand Feet, which is a take on obviously their Nightmare at Twenty Thousand Feet. But it was a different story. I mm -hmm. thought, oh, they're not just going to remake the the old Shatner. And again, it's a classic. I hope, but they had Adam uh -huh. Scott, and I'm a big, big fan of Adam Scott. He's great. Um, and it, it had a nice spin on it. But it was done. It was obviously set in an airplane, and it was done. No big massive effects, no, but, but it works so beautiful, you know. And yeah, I'm enjoying mm -hmm. it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I need to find out when, when the next one's going to be on because I, I don't want to miss it. Yeah. So, yeah. anywho, I, anywho, I, 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 yeah, yeah. we could walk. <laughs> Maybe we should. Maybe just tell, tell, tell the guests not to bother. We'll just waffle on about TV shows <laughs> up in Gaul evening. Um, <laughs> but funny enough, I've been catching up on Young Sheldon. Uh, which I, uh, I I really really enjoy that show. It's great. He reminds. I mean, I'm I'm not going to say I'm not quite that smart, but it reminds me of a lot of what I went through as a kid. You know, as a you know, I was called you know brainiac and nerd and SWAT and all the rest of it. You know, and Professor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just being a smart kid. Mm -hmm. and, and a, you know, it, it's but it, it's good. It's dealt with incredibly well, and he also gets on very well with his his Mimo, his grandma. Uh, which I identify that uh -huh. my grandma is probably the single biggest influence on my life. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's good. I, I, I enjoy it, and obviously with the Big Bang Theory finishing this season, um, <laughs> you know, we're going to have our our next fix. Yeah, our yeah. I fix. have to get caught up. I haven't seen, I haven't seen any of that, and uh, I'm I'm a couple seasons behind on. Um, uh, big a uh, big bang. I mean, I I don't think I've seen oh, really? the last probably three seasons. Uh huh. Oh, I yeah, thought, I thought yeah. you kept I, up with that. I I'm on with that. Yeah. Yeah. The last so one I saw was when uh, the season finale when uh, Sheldon was going to. I think uh, he proposes. Doesn't he propose to Amy? Like he take he gets on a plane and yeah. um mm -hmm. he gets there and he says, "Wait, that's the last thing I've saw. That's the last thing I've seen." So oh wow! Oh well, well, no. So you've missed. Yeah. Well, the last season was leading up to them getting married, and this last season now uh -huh. is, is they're married and moving forward, and they're up for a Nobel yeah, Prize at the moment. Home. But it's good. Nice. Any yeah, anywho, anywho. anywho. Oh. So, uh, do we, are we just going to waffle all night, or do we, do we have a show? I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy doing this, to be honest. Just waffle all night. Do we, or do we not, we, have a show? We do have a show, and I'm really excited that we have returning guests again, because I'm, I I think that just means we're doing something right. Um, so, both of our, our guests are, are returning. We um, The first segment, we have crime fiction writer and publisher. No, sorry. Wrong order. The uh, our first author is a uh, oh, you, you, know, you've got, you have one job. <laughs> one job. I have them in the wrong order. That's all. <laughs> and, uh, to be fair, it might not be. I, I it might not be that that we you know we're doing things. Right. It could be this could be like their community service. <laughs> 
So, you know, don't, don't get ideas above your station. <laughs> Pick up litter pick up litter by the side of the road in an orange jumpsuit or go on the new panic mode. Oh, for God. Well, it's raining. It's raining, so we'll go on the show. <laughs> That's what it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have a horror author, Tony Knighton, on the show. And um, in the second segment, we'll have crime fiction writer and publisher Tom Vader, both returning awesome. guests, which I think awesome. is awesome. Yeah, and they are yeah. so hey let's without further ado and i love saying that um <laughs> why don't you why don't you bring, bring, introduce our first guest then okay if you want i mean, if you, want, I mean if you don't if you don't want to join in next <laughs> Dina, just say and i'll do the show by myself it's uh, entirely up to you it's uh, entirely up to you uh, uh, our first guest is horror author tony knighton Woo! <laughs> Hello. Hey there, Christina. Hey, James. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Good, Tony. How are you? So good to speak to you again. It's been a while. How are you? Yes, it has. Oh, I'm doing swell. Excellent. Swell. I love that. I'm just swell. <laughs> so it's been, it must be at least a year since we last had you on the show. What have you been up to? Um, uh same same stuff. I'm still working, still still uh, still writing, still fighting fire. You know, nothing nothing real new. Oh, how about you guys? <laughs> much, you know, much the same. We're do, doing this every Thursday night and working ourselves to death. So, um, well, I am. <laughs> Extina naps a lot, basically. Yes, um, I nap. She, she, she spends a lot of the time asleep. <laughs> so, and it's funny enough. You need to, I, you know, I, I wish I could sleep, actually. I, I'm sort of on the go from stupid o'clock and still on the go. And, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, sure, so, sure. Uh, Tony is here to talk to us about his book, A Few Days Away. Um, according to Extina's notes, it does not have a tagline. Probably she couldn't be bothered to write <laughs> one in here. So, um, uh, Tony, tell us, uh, tell us a bit more about A Few Days Away, sir. Well, uh, it's the book I've been working on since my uh, since the publication of my last book, uh, Three Hours Past Midnight. Um, it was published by Crime Wave Press, who is, you know, commanded and uh, run by your next guest, Tom Vader. He's he's my publisher. Oh, and, that's uh, cool. <laughs> best behavior. Yeah, then. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, I, I have to make a correction. I'm, I'm much more of a crime writer than I am a horror writer. I've, um, my, my, my stuff tends to be dark, and I have written a couple of horror stories, but most of my work is, is crime fiction. So, okay, all right. Hence, I, I can hence get my that publication by Crime Wave <laughs> Press. A bit of a giveaway there, yes. Yes, that works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I I, and, uh, you know, I I I wrote I first wrote this character in a short story in in my first book, a collection called Happy Hour and Other Philadelphia Cruelties, and he appeared in a story called Mister Wonderful, and um, I liked the guy a lot, and he managed to survive that first story, and I thought I'd really like to do something else with him. And um, I'd had this idea of uh, um, a robbery that should take place because the uh, the, the the victim really needed robbing. Uh, without going into great detail, <laughs> this, this man needed to be robbed, and um, so that that was the, that was the jumping off point for uh, my last novel. Um, three hours past midnight and I I still like the guy so I'm doing something else with him now oh, and uh, yeah and I, I just uh, a few weeks ago happened on I've been working on it for a long time without a title and I realized a, a good title for it would be a few days away um, for for a couple of reasons so uh, that's what I've been doing fantastic fantastic so um if I remember right, you your your day job you you were a cab driver. Is that correct? 
No, I'm a firefighter. Fire here in Philadelphia. Firefighter. I'm sorry. I I I knew you were driving. I knew you were driving. So are you are you you still you still on with that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm still working, still fighting fire. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, um I had a uh, my brother-in-law, he does. Uh, he's he used to do crash fire rescue, and um, I don't know. I just think it's it, it's so it's such a noble job. It is, and um, I don't know. And hot, it's well, really, really hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. That's, that's a nice compliment. But you have yeah. to keep in mind that we have a lot of fun too. So, um, you oh, know, yeah. we all we all kind of. Well, you know, you got that job, bowl, so. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> How long have you been doing that? I've been a fireman for 34 years now. Wow. Wow. That's, that's I can't awesome. imagine. I mean, I've mean, I, 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 I always thought the last minute, I mean, so I mean, how how many you know fires do you, would you would you sort of tackle in a say in a week or a month? I mean, is, is it sort of one every night or? No, so no, it, it, it depends and... on where you're working. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm getting along, as they say, and uh, <laughs> I work in my own. For the first time in my career, I work in my own neighborhood, and I walk to work, and it's, it's kind of a sleepy part of town. So we we aren't as active as I was, say, in the '80s and '90s. Um, but in the '80s, a, a couple of times we fought four house fires in one night. Um, it's, wow. it's a funny, I mean, the job's funny because in the busiest of places, you can go for a stretch without doing anything at all. And then all of a sudden you're, you're just out all night. You're just doing stuff all night, you know, yeah. all day and all night. And, uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You, you, the bell rings and you never know. So, oh, um, wow. You know, but I I like it, so I, I still enjoy the work. Excellent. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I mean, do you, are you are you um, are you close to retire? I mean, will you retire one day or just keep going? Well, I'm I, I'm uh, I know I'm closer to the end than I am the beginning. Um, <laughs> I've I've had the paperwork twice, and I chickened out both times. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I I sort of have a vague plan, but I'm not a good planner, you know. Um, I <laughs> always figured that I would know when it was time, mm -hmm. and it just isn't time yet. Um, right. I, uh, I probably I probably uh, I, you know I, I probably was dropped on my head a few times. It probably shouldn't be time, but I, <laughs> like I said, I, I still. Enjoy I still enjoy it, so you know. Uh, hey, you know, why, still why, not, it. why not keep yeah. doing it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I agree. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, obviously, you're, you're, you're still, you know, you're, you're uh, writing. You know, you still, you plan to carry on with that. Oh yeah. Oh sure. Sure. I do you're never going to quit. That, that's good. Never. It's one of those things. Funny. Yeah. I don't think writers ever retire. You know, we sort of no, exactly. Of Keep, right. Just keep going. Not, yeah. <laughs> just keep going. We never stop. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't see me ever. You know, even as you know, as old as I'm getting, I I, I can't. I can't see that. I think uh, the, the idea is sort of they sort of pile up in your head. <laughs> if, you, if you don't, yeah. if you don't get yeah. them out, they, they just drive you insane. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of writing, uh, I want to I want to hear more about uh, a few days away. Do you have an excerpt for us, Tony? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's, Yay! Uh, um, shall I read it now? You go for it. Yes. Uh, you sure? The the airwaves. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to set set up the excerpt for us, if you need to set that up, go ahead. Um, it doesn't need a lot of setup. He's uh, returning to the scene of a an old crime where uh, the money that he stole got lost, but never made its way back to the bank. And uh, he had to abscond, but he figures somebody's got it and he'd like to go get it. So he's, he's on his way there and I'll, uh, I'll start now. Um, 
I drove west on Ridge. The antenna farm was visible above the horizon for a stretch, long black lines drawn against the gray sky. Once past the city into White Marsh Township, the road changed designation from an avenue to a pike and widened to four lanes. On either side were houses and commercial buildings and businesses like car dealers, but the road was also fronted by long stretches of green open land. It got more built up the closer I got to Norristown. Just beyond the big five-point intersection at Chemical Road was an overpass. Low in the distance, I saw a long, idled steel mill property. Once inside the borough, the road changed names again, this time to Main Street, and more closely resembled a densely occupied aging urban arterial. I traveled through the district, business district, past the Montgomery County Courthouse, and a few blocks later turned toward the river. I parked just off an intersection two blocks in and approached an address in an unbroken row of shabby three-story brick houses. Some porch fronts sagged and there were slates missing from the common mansard. I climbed the steps and knocked. Parsons opened the door part way and squinted against the light. Hey, T-shirt stood out against his dark complexion. He let me in and closed the door behind us. It took a moment for my eyes to adjust. I hadn't seen him in over a year. He was a big man, but appeared to have lost weight. The undershirt bagged about his metal. He led me into the kitchen, scuffling along in a pair of slippers. The curtains were drawn here, too, but these were lighter and gave everything a sickly yellowish tint. He said, I think I have what you want. Something you can carry? Yeah, something small. I could smell liquor on his breath. It can't be obvious. He nodded and opened the door to the basement. It wasn't like him to drink at all, let alone during the day. I didn't like it. I followed him down the steps. Something was different about the house, too, but I wasn't sure what. He pulled open the bottom drawer of an old metal desk. This is a clean piece. Girl I know picked it up last month in the city. Personal protection. Parsons used straw buyers. People without a record who could go to gun shops and make legal purchases. He was quiet and careful, and it was reasonable to assume that others he dealt with would be too. He showed me the pistol. Glock 43, subcompact automatic, 9mm, 6-round magazine, made to be carried under a jacket, he looked up, or in a purse. Despite his mood, his thick brown fingers moved skillfully over the weapon. He released the magazine, cleared the chamber, and laid the pistol on an oil-stained towel. You want to test it? No need. Do you have ammo? It took an effort, but he smiled at the compliment. Sure. The house was quiet. Usually music would be playing here, the radio or a record. Parsons walked across the room to some shelves and said, you want a holster for it? No. I understood what was different. The house didn't smell of cigarettes. Where's Olivia? He fiddled with something on the shelf. She passed. He motioned toward his chest, cancer. I'm sorry, just to say something, I said. How long was she sick? Diagnosed eight months ago. They gave her treatments, radiation, but it was just, you know, to make her feel better. Palliative? Yeah, he turned. That's the word. Only one of her kids came to the service, her youngest boy, Jamar. I needed to move this along, but said, sons miss their mothers and pointed to the Glock. How much? That's you, all right. Always the professional. I waited for him. He finally said, nine will do. I'll throw in a box of cartridges. He turned back to the shelf for them. I counted out nine $100 bills on the desktop and took the pistol and ammunition. I considered suggesting that he give up the business for a while, that it might not be good for him to stay closed up in a dark house full of weapons. But he already knew that. I said thanks and left. And I'll stop there. Oh, you stop? No, you can't stop there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying that. Yeah, you, you guys all always do that. You know, we, we, we need to get we need to get somebody else to just read everything. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, I know. I got you. You read it well as well. I, I could. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, I could. I could listen. I could listen to you read all night. That was that was brilliant. I enjoyed that. 
Oh, good. I'm, well, I'm yeah, the funny, Sorry, the funny thing is, is that normally normally I read along while they're reading, so I kind of know when they're going to stop. And this time I was just, you know, I had my eyes closed and I was listening, yeah. and then he just stopped. And I was like, well, you can't stop there. I was yeah. the same, yeah, I was sort of enjoying that. That was silly. That was brilliant. Is, is, uh, is, that, is that book actually, is, is that out now? Is it, is it due out shortly or...? No, no, I'm still in there. I, I, I haven't finished it yet. Oh, and, right. Um, no, no, and uh, I, I mean, in my head it's finished, but I haven't gotten it all on paper yet, and I don't have it all. I don't have it all how I like it, so mm-hmm. I would like it to be. So uh, I'm going to work on it for a while. And then, uh, you know, then I'll, I'll send it out into the world and see what happens. Excellent. Excellent. Well, when you when when it's finished, you you'll have to come back on the show and read read more because I I was enjoying that. I was enjoying oh, cool. that. I like I like I like I just I, I just something just the style. I mean the the, the the writing and the reading style was uh, uh, was good. I enjoyed that. I want I want more next time. <laughs> I'm going to campaign for more. Yes. Be, we we do have some authors on who you know they, they send us their snippet and it's like half a book and no no just. <laughs> <laughs> As good as the uh, half of we do so have a, a lot, lot of reading. We yeah. have a, a well, listener who who said the same thing. He said, "Dude, keep reading." So I just thought <laughs> I'd let you know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, she's just well, showing up. Sure she's just showing up that we have a listener. I think, to be honest, we actually right, got somebody. Right, we name. have eight. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's at least what two two now. Wait, wait, got, wait a minute. Like you that. mean there's people listening to this? Well, apparently oh, no. two of them, yes. Two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thunk it, eh? Who'd have thunk it? Mm. <laughs> so, uh, Tony, I, I don't know, I can't remember if we if I did this with you last time you were here, but um, would you like to do 11 questions with me? Sure, sure. Absolutely. Yay, that was the right answer. That's awesome. Yeah, I would say, if he said no, it yeah, was what, tough, really, because yeah, we got to. What would to. have happened if I said no? We'd have done it anyway. Right, I know. With or without I, you. So, no, pretty um, much. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I no, no, questions no. with me. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will warn you, though, she, she will judge you on your answers, so think very carefully <laughs> about each one. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> And now, 11 questions. Okay, number one, what's your guilty pleasure? My guilty pleasure? Um, probably Rita's Water Ice, mango flavored. Okay, that's a, an interesting. <laughs> I said you. Why, you why, I know, I know that. Why? I know that nobody outside of Philadelphia knows what water ice is. Um, I have no idea. It, it, no. It, it's um, <laughs> it's it's finely crushed ice with uh, flavoring in it, and um, it's. Oh, it's uh, slushy then, like it, a slurpee or something, right? Sure, shaved ice. Yeah? yeah. It's just it's, but it's not shaved ice. Um, I know what that uh-huh. is, and I've seen it. it, and it's similar, but this is way better. And um, <laughs> I, I think um, it, it was, it, it was like um, indigenous to the Philadelphia area forever and ever. And um, a guy, a, a retired fireman, actually has it up and down the east coast now and i forget what they call it in the south they can't call it water ice because it, it nobody nobody de- you know nobody would even try it so he called it something else south of the mason dixon wow. line but i can't remember what he called it but that's my guilty pleasure mm. the, the mango flavor and, and um if you eat it too fast in the summer it gives you a brain freeze but it's it's just it's just <laughs> great stuff <laughs> It sounds good. Sounds good. It does, okay, yeah. that's not too bad of a guilty pleasure. Cause I think mine would be like ice cream or something. So you know, you're right on the right track there. Um, yeah, yeah. Number two, uh, do you prefer the mountains or the ocean? I'm gonna say the ocean. Uh, yeah. Be, again, being yeah. from, being from uh, Philadelphia, we we love to you know 
South Jersey, we, you know, the Atlantic Ocean, the Jersey mm-hmm. Shore. Not the TV show, the Jersey Shore, but, you know. Um, <laughs> Thank God. Uh, I wouldn't Atlantic judge City, that Wildwood, one. You know, Ocean City, Cape May, those, those places. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, here we go. What's your favorite lunch meat? Oh, man. I... For for health reasons, I gave up eating meat a couple of years ago, but I love oh. Lebanon bologna. And what I don't even know how to <laughs> Lebanon bologna. And I don't even know how to describe it. Um I, I'm huh. I'm too much of a coward to have ever like tried to find out what's in it. But it's real spicy. <laughs> it's and it's 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 good. Trust me, it's good stuff. You know, one of our, our guests from last week mentioned the um, ham and cheese loaf, which I was like, oh, my God, I remember that from when I was younger. <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I it wasn't remember really, that, too. It wasn't really ham. It wasn't really cheese, but it was still good. So. Yeah, yeah. Yuck. It's kind of disgusting, but it is and, good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I love to follow up the question about lunch meat with um, – if it were legal to do so, would you eat human flesh? Um, no, nah, because I had to give up meat. You know, it's right. like, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, in a pinch, I, I, I probably would. Like, I, I think everybody says, like, yeah, if I really had to, you know, but. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, if it was just, if, if, if it was socially acceptable and I didn't have to, I probably wouldn't. Because like I said, I had to give up meat, so, you know. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, um, I would not. I, I I think I would go hungry and starve first. And, and I would, I would, dig, opposite, I would dig like, in, I yeah. would dig in at any opportunity. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I, may, I, may, I may, I may, I may, I may make a start, I may start eating the children tonight. <laughs> well, you, you know, James, I'm not surprised. No? <laughs> no, no. No. no, no I, I just seem like the sort of person who would eat people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That's great. It's easy. Obviously, um, it's got me, it's got me, it's got me pegged, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see, Tony, have you ever been pulled over for a traffic violation? Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, of course I, I can, <laughs> times that I can count. Um, I, 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 and, but I, I'm not a bad driver. I just, you know, um, it's, it's usually um, the quality of the vehicles that I'm driving that, that <laughs> leads officers to uh, – I, I had a truck. I had a truck. I, I I used to be a roofer on the side, and I had a truck that was that ran fine, but nothing worked. And one of my headlights I had held in place with um, ceiling wire. And um, if, if you hit a bump, all of a sudden you were like looking up in the trees, and, and you know. And it, I mean, this 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 truck was really bad, and I got I got. I, I used to never take it out at night, but I was I stuck on a job late, and I was on my way home, and the, and the guy pulled me over, and I, 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 I told the cop, I said, uh, you know, I showed him my ID card, and I, and I told him, I, I said, you know, I, I thought I had that tail light fixed. I'm sorry, and he started laughing. He said, tail light, tail light. You, you don't have anything working. And, I was, and uh, he looked at my ID, and he said, he said, you're, you're a fireman. And I said, yeah. He says, look, just get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> and, and, and don't drive that truck anymore. And, uh, you know, I, I promised them I'd go away, and, and you know, uh, I did. But, that's, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I'm notorious for driving terrible vehicles, um, having driven terrible vehicles for most of my life, and, and yeah, yeah, I get pulled over for that. Nice. Um. Which is your favorite franchise? Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth, Elm Street, Hellraiser, or Saw? Uh, I'm going to go with Saw. Really? Fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's my my okay. daughter Anna. Yeah. It's her favorite too. And um, uh-huh. we we we've um, we've gone to I think 
I think all of the Saw movies together. Nice. But uh, I, I, I'm real partial to the first one myself. But, uh, the first yeah. one was yeah, which is, that was, which was me, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that was the only one I saw at the movies. Well, I've seen all the others, but you know, on DVD, on the whatever pay per view, whatever. Uh, but the first one, because it was, it was. I mean, the twist was great, and it was incredibly well done. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the, the, the Saw franchise as well. Definitely. I, I, so I, yeah, I yeah. like the invent. I mean, you know, as it went on, you know, the storylines got a bit thin, but the, the inventive, the sheer inventiveness of the contraption that was was, was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, I thought it was. Uh, I, I thought it was original. Um, it was. I, 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 it, it, it held me, you know, really yeah. well. So. Okay, so, yeah. Tony, give me uh, one one interesting non-writing related fact about you. One interesting non-writing related fact. Hmm. That's tough. Um, I'm not that interesting a guy. Uh, non writing. Uh, I've um, I've played music semi professionally since I was in high school, mostly bass guitar. That's, that's interesting. That's really awesome. And I was going to say nothing we already know, so you couldn't have said firefighter because that's really interesting too. Um, so no, um, bass player. That's awesome. Um, and what is your least favorite part of the writing process? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know that I can pick out something that's least favorite about the process. Um, mm-hmm. I get... I, I don't like it when I can't get it right. And I know that's a very kind of general sounding thing, but I, I, I mean, most writers who I've talked to about this, they, they might not be thinking about the exact same thing I am, but they always agree. Like, oh yeah, I hate that. Uh-huh. Um, and <laughs> and um, it's, it's, it's just. For me, it's very frustrating because when you do feel like you're getting things right, it feels so good. And mm-hmm. I don't like I don't like putting in the effort and missing out on that feeling. Uh, that's a good answer. If, if, if any of um, that makes sense, I, I you know. Yeah, it does. No, it does. Yeah, yeah when it does. I think anyone, together, anyone who yeah, writes. Yeah. Anyone who writes can identify with that one. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you can be on a roll and just write and write, but you're like, you know, you're just not quite there. Things aren't coming together. And even though you're writing, it's just not, you know, yeah. not right. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, when, yeah. it's when what what what, what appears on the page um, doesn't yeah. quite mm-hmm. match in your head. That's the frustrating yeah. thing. Is <laughs> like that, that, I know it's in my head. Just getting it there is is, is difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, why why do why do we do this? So <laughs> why do we torture? <laughs> well, I hate to say it, Tony, but we are out of time for our first segment. Um you have to promise to come back when you when you're finished and uh read more. We we need more. Okay. Cool. Good. Any time. Excellent. So uh, awesome. thank you thank so you much for so joining much. us. And um yeah, uh we will speak to you again very, very soon. Okay, well, thank well, thanks you, Tony. An awful lot for thank, thanks so much for having me on. You guys are the hey. best. Yeah, and we, we, we love you, too. Thank you for joining us. Okay, have a great <laughs> evening. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. And we will be right back after this. Radio Show is sponsored by Hellbound Books, purveyors of all manner of dark fiction. You can find the publisher along with links to all their available works across platforms at hellboundbookspublishing.com. Hellbound Books is proud to be the first in the indie publishing business with a very own app on both Google Play and the App Store. 
in the mood for something steamy to read, check out new erotica author Jennifer Lynn's website at jenniferlynnerotica.com. You can find James at his website, www.jameslongmore.com, and Xtina has an author page found on the Help on the website. Don't forget to follow the Panic Room Radio Show on social media. Our Facebook page, unofficial, the Panic Room Radio Show, Twitter at Panic Room Radio, our YouTube channel, the new Panic Room Radio Show, and come visit our website at www.panicroomradio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to part two. Well, we's back. We's back. And yeah, I said there was going to be a quiz next thing. So, um, have you guessed the theme for the music this week? Um. Oh man, you did tell me no. there would be a quiz, and you know what? I no. told you, I said, I messaged you, I said, they will pay attention, there will be a quiz. You did. Was it, is it something about time? Is it, no, no, I have no idea. So, yeah, I got nothing. No. I don't no. even know. You know, no. I wasn't even listening to that second song. You know what I was doing? I was panicking because you said, okay, I'm going to bed now. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. So, seriously, I was panicking up until, like, you know, you started talking. I was thinking, what am I going to say if, if you know, we come back from break and he's not there? I'm thinking in my head, this is why we call it the panic room, you know? <laughs> I, it wouldn't be the same without a bit of panic, would it? Yeah. 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 No, no, no. No. <laughs> But uh, so oh. you should you should know me better by now. Yeah, as, as if as if I I, you know, I I could have gone to bed. Actually, I'm, I'm shut. I've had a long day. And so not not you know obviously having a broken night's sleep doesn't help. You know. So, no. You no. Know, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I just yeah. I like I like my weather app, but I can't figure out how to switch off the notifications. I don't think I'll just just know. <laughs> hello, dogs come to see me. I just don't think I'm bright enough for that. To be honest, hey Mike. Uh, he was the dog. He was actually <laughs> physically shaking this morning because of the thunder. Absolutely terrified, bless Aww. him. Yeah, but he's he's happy yeah. now. He's happy puppy now. So um, <laughs> yeah, how are you getting on with all your you dogs know, I, over there? Only you've got about nine thousand dogs in your uh, house now. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, five of them, and um, it's it's you know touch and go. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes it's okay, and uh, then other times they, you know, the big ones are sweethearts. They really, really are, um, but they are big, and when they get playing, even though they're puppies, um, they sound really scary, like terrifying. Um, mm -hmm. And you just never know. Are they going to, you know, it's going to be like, you know, really scary or, you know, or whatever, but they're just puppies, so they're just playing. And, of yeah. course, then the little ones are they're, they're, the little ones are the snippy ones. The little ones are actually the ones who are going to bite, you know, somebody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they can't really do the damage. And it's just, uh, you know. And then, of course, you got mine, who my dog is the older one. He's, like, probably about 10 years old. He just wants to, you know, take his nap and be left alone. Uh, just like you, really. <laughs> Just like me. Yeah, exactly. Just like you. He wants to have a nap. He's Bless him. Weird. He's my you're yeah. Animal. yeah. So <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I uh, I I don't know. They it, it's there's a lot of dogs. There were you know when you were talking about Star Trek, uh, I was thinking you know the two big dogs. Their names are Kirk and Spock. That's a little you know bit of trivia oh, there. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so. I was about to say <laughs> there weren't any dogs in Star Trek. They should do a dog. They should do a doggy version of Star Trek. Be great, wouldn't it? But yeah, I'm impressed with the called Kirk and Spock. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, the, to make it even more interesting, the the girl dog, her name was Spock. You know, so excellent, <laughs> excellent, right? Um, right. Odd. Most of. <laughs> yeah, it is. I I didn't. I wasn't the. Uh, the I I did not name them, so I can't take any no. responsibility for that. But no, it's like a freaking kennel. I'm telling you. Um. Uh, it's you know when we we leave and then we come. Oh, this is pretty funny. We were gone earlier today, and we we get home and the dogs start barking. It's like a freaking kennel. And um, mm -hmm. we had some some things in the car, so I had to go back out to the car to get the things. And 
you know, so we, we, you know, get here and the dogs start going crazy. And of course they're in their kennels. And um, then I go back out to the car and they just stop barking. They were so confused. Like normally, you know, we go right over to them and let them out. But this time it was like, you know, we showed up and then we left again and they didn't know what to think. They were, it was pretty oh, funny. So I do bless like messages. Um, yeah. Bless them. Um, I and, know. And speaking of things not knowing what to think, obviously the, um, the, the Mueller report on Donald Trump and his shenanigans with Russia was... was uh, I think published pretty much in its entirety. So those are the entire they're going to publish it. Um, and it, it all seems a bit smoke and mirrors to me. You know, he seems to have been vindicated, but not. You know, it's like it's just. <laughs> you know, it's almost like you know we well we know you're up, we're not, but we're not being able to nail anything concrete to you. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, bless. But again, yeah. old yeah. Trump trumpet is um, same old. <laughs> Same old God, but I, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, I must admit, since he made the announcement about uh, windmill wind cancer, um, I've been worried about that, huh? you know, so, um, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so I tell you, I'm going to, because of the people, you know, we, we've, got, we've not had him on the show for a while, I'm going to play, play my little tribute to Mr. Trump, I think. <laughs> I really believe I'd run into it even if I didn't have a weapon. Nobody knows the system better than me. Nobody knows politicians better than I do. Nobody knows. Nobody's better. Nobody's stronger. There's nobody bigger or better at the military than I am. I love the First Amendment. Nobody know, loves it better than me. Nobody loves the Bible more than I do. There is nobody that respects women more than I do. Nobody builds walls better than me. Nobody's in the history of this country has ever known so much about infrastructure as Donald Trump. Nobody knows that better than me. Nobody even understands it but me. Nobody can do it like me. Which is why I alone can fix it. I have Ivy League education, smart guy. I know words, I have the best words. You like, I'm a smart person. It's this, it's not my salesmanship. It's what? This, you know what that is? It's the brain power. I'm getting thousands of letters and tweets that I was right about the whole situation. I mean, I've been right about a lot of things, frankly. I should be a newscaster because I called it before the news. I watch this stuff. You know, I'm like a guy with vision. I have an instinct for this kind of thing. I'm good at war. I've had a lot of wars of my own. I'm really good at war. In my book, I predicted terrorism. It's a rigged system. I think I've done a great service by pointing this out. I was the one that really broke the glass ceiling on behalf of women. I think I'm doing the military a great favor. Did a great job in Texas, a great job in Florida. I truly believe that the first 100 days of my administration has been just about the most successful in our country's history. You look like a million, a million and a half people. Thank you, everybody. What a crowd, what a turnout. I understand things. It's my favorite food, and these are the best. It keeps me from running. You believe it? And I think I think in answer to that last question is no, I can't believe it. To be quite honest with you, <laughs> but yeah, I know. You know, I listen to that. Yeah, I listen to that, and I think the bad part is, is I think he actually believes all of those things he's saying. I think he, he does. He, he does. It's funny if I was, I was, I was <laughs> having a conversation with a guy just the other day, uh, in a professional capacity, I have to say. Uh, we were discussing um, uh, money laundering and uh, crime syndicates and various stock scams, et cetera, et cetera, as you do. Um, and he said, well, something says, something that Trump actually says on that piece, oh, you know, well, is, is a mark of that kind of narcissistic person who gets themselves into a position where they make such a mess, but that only mm -hmm. I can fix it, which is how they cling on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Star Trek reference right. there. Yeah. Um, and he said it, just that quote, 
you know, it's like, the, the, the classic narcissist um, uh, phrase is, I need your help. As soon as somebody says that, I need your help, you, you know what you're dealing with. Unless, <laughs> unless I suppose they're drowning, in which case they're, they're drowning. But um, anywho, 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 it's, good old, it's always nice to, to wheel out <laughs> old, the, the Donald. Um, and I think I've said this before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, um, our, for our American listeners, and we have listeners from all over the world, which is jolly. Um, in, in England, back back where I'm from, Trump is actually uh, a euphemism for fart. <laughs> so every time, Donald, seriously, you know, in our house, you know, it, it's it's called doing a Donald, <laughs> which is kind of. <laughs> So, which is why every time Donald Trump is, is mentioned, Trump Towers and Trump this and Trump that, we just have a little giggle. Because, we're, A, we're childish, and B, <laughs> it does mean something different over there. But um, it's like the whole, the whole fanny, fanny thing. Fanny means something altogether wildly different in England. Um, but, um, uh-huh. but, yeah, the, the Trump, which is, we, I always say, which is why we don't think um, his, his perfume took off very well in England. Because no, nobody's going to buy... <laughs> their loved one, the great smell of Trump. No, uh, no, you, I you, wouldn't buy you, that. Honey, you, 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 smell, you smell of Trump, which is pretty, uh, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, just, just to try and um, you know, dig, dig this show out of the gutter I've put us in, um, what, what have we got coming next, <laughs> up next, my dear? For our second guest, we have crime fiction writer and publisher Tom Vader. Woo! <laughs> Good evening, Tom. How are you, sir? Hello, good evening and good night, and uh, thanks for having me on the show again. Hello. So you, you, you sound like you're about 30,000 miles away. You may Put your mouth closer to the mouthpiece on your phone. I will do. I'm actually on the laptop. Can you hear me better now? Uh, not quite. You need to get, get really, really close. <laughs> Let me see what I can do. Let me see what good I can man. Do. Um, <laughs> Not sure how to increase the volume this side. Can you hear me now? Hello. Uh, a little bit better. I hear. Just, just, just get your mouth closer to the laptop, and all will be well. <laughs> well, um, I hope you can hear me now, and uh, thanks for having me on the show again for the second time. Yeah, you're welcome. So we always say when, when we have returning guests, I mean, you, you really should know better, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> After that song and after, you know, I'm following the American president on your show, I mean, how, how can that get any better, you know? Well, to be fair, it couldn't get, it, it, to be honest, it couldn't get any worse than following Donald, Donald J, I'm afraid. But, um. Okay, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do my best uh, not to be sad then. Yeah, very, very. I mean, I'm, I'm the best at everything. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> nobody builds walls better than me, he says. But um, God bless him. So, uh, Tom, I mean, it's been it's been a while uh, since we last spoke. What have you been up to? Well, um, it's a beautiful morning in Bangkok today. It's bloody bloody hot. Uh, I think today will be forty degrees. That's centigrade, not Fahrenheit. Wow. Um, you'd have you'd have to translate that into uh, Fahrenheit for me, please. But it's very, very um, hot. I'll do that as we speak. Keep talking. I'll get that worked out now. <laughs> I've got an app for that. Uh, mm. uh, as, as, as I was last time, I'm still a publisher and a writer. I still uh, am the co-owner of Crime Wave Press. And you just had Tony Knighton on. Um, mm-hmm. He published two of books. He's a super fantastic writer from Philadelphia. And I really, really mm. love his most recent novels. His, recent, his most recent novel that he's put out with us. And besides that, I've got a new novel out called The Monsoon Ghost Image, which is the uh, third part of my Detective Maya series. And actually, it's the last part. Um, so that's just come out in December. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Wow, and, um, it's, um, wow, it's 104 for our American listeners. It's 104 Fahrenheit. Wow. That's pretty, uh, to be fair, that, that's that's awesome. pretty much it. That's a, that's a typical summer's day in Houston. That, to be honest, um, <laughs> we, we've 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 had cold, cold and bad weather recently. But summer is on its way, and we we regularly have in the hundred uh, in the the, the low hundreds. So I know your pain. I know your pain. We're, we're bracing ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
April, May, it's like that here. It's, it's uh -huh. very, very hot. We're all waiting for yeah. the rain. Wow. Yeah, we usually get sort of June, July, and into August. It gets it, get, it does get bloody hot here as well. So, do you, is it is it humid? I mean, we, it tends to be a dry heat here. Do you, do you get the humid humidity? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very humid, of course. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, obviously, everybody. I mean, Christina's lived in Florida. She knows all about humidity. Oh, it was awful. I don't ever want to go back. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I lived in Texas as well for a while, and it, it totally is a, a just a way different kind of heat. Um, and I, I, you know, the the humidity humidity stuff. Is, no, I, I would never want to do that again. It was just awful. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does and it's still out. it's still early. It's still early in the morning there for you, isn't it, Tom? So it's just going to get hotter, isn't it? Yeah, in an hour it'll be really really hot. It's about ten thirty here, ten ten thirty a.m. Uh, it's just going to get hotter. I I suggest you just stay indoors and you crank the the AC up and drink lots of I don't know lemonade or iced tea or something. <laughs> oh, beer. <laughs> oh, beer. Beer's Beer. always good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> well, it is, <laughs> it is already Friday there, so. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Friday is so I want. So I want to hear more um, about your book, The Monsoon Ghost Image. Um, and, you know, this one had a tagline, James, if you, you saw this one had a tagline. You didn't read it for us, though. I mean, why do I bother? <laughs> well, because you, you don't usually. You don't usually. I thought I would, I would let you. Yeah, I'd let you, you read it out. Go on. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, Dirty Pictures, Secret Wars, and Human Beasts. Detective, who is it, Mayor? Is that it? Is back to investigate right. the politics of murder. That's awesome. Ooh, that so, sounds... Um, everything in there. I know. I like the Dirty Dirty pictures. I like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, you <laughs> would. I, yeah, I knew. I knew the one thing you'd take away from that would be that. You just, <laughs> just, just, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a Do you have an excerpt for us, Tom? A reading. I'm sorry. Do you have a reading for us? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, hang on a second. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just wanted to say we, we can continue on the weather theme because uh, the book is called The Monsoon Ghost Image, of course, and uh, the monsoon will be upon us here in Thailand in about a month's time, and then it'll get slightly cooler but even more sticky. Oh, uh, yuck. More sticky. That's awful. Hey, that sounds awful, isn't it? <laughs> really painting a really good picture of, of the area, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a beautiful day here, I, I will say. It had a, a slight breeze, and it maybe hit like 80. It was just gorgeous. Nice, sunny day. I, I couldn't have wanted better weather. It was it was beautiful. You're just showing off because we, we, <laughs> we had a crap day today, weather-wise. <laughs> Well, it's supposed to be even, it's supposed to be cold, well, cool tomorrow, and then I think, like, it's the high is, like, 48 on Saturday or something, so, you know, oh, we wow. go from 80 today, and in two days, it's not even 50, something crazy mm -hmm. like that, yeah. It's all over, it's all over um, the place at the moment, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you would like me to read the excerpt, yeah? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe I should just read the short introduction to the book then, so that so that you, um, listeners have a have a bit of an idea of what the book is actually about. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, that that um, all yours. Does that sound good? Yes, sir. Mhm. Mm yep. Um, so when award-winning German conflict photographer Martin Ritter disappears in a in a boating accident in Thailand, the nation, that's Germany of course, mourns the loss of a cultural icon. But a few weeks later, Detective Meyer's agency in Hamburg gets a call from Ritter's wife. Her husband has been seen alive on the streets of Bangkok. So then Meyer decides to travel to Thailand to find Ritter. But all that he finds is trouble and a photograph. And um, as soon as Meyer puts his hand on the monsoon ghost image, the name of the book's, the book's title as well, the detective turns from hunter to hunted, 
the CIA, international business interests, a doctor with a pension for mutilation, and a woman who calls herself the wicked witch of the East, all want to get their fingers on Martin Ritter's most important piece of work, a visual proof of a post-9-11 rendition and the torture of a suspected Muslim terrorist on Thai soil. From the concrete canyons to the Thai capital, to the savage jungles and hedonist party islands of southern Thailand, Maya and his sidekick Mikhail race against formidable foes to discover some of our darkest truths and save their lives into the bargain. And um, so the ex excerpt I'm going to read is, uh, is a scene where Detective Maya has arrived on the island of Koh Phangan in southern Thailand, which is famous for its full moon parties. You might have heard of those. And uh, he's still hunting for Martin Ritter, and he's staying with a woman called Hom, who tells him her story, a universal tale of big money interests against small, honest people. So that's the story I'm going to read to you. Okay, Much it's later, all yours. Uh, okay, it's called, the chapter is called The House. Um, Much later, they sat on rattan masks on the veranda, a single candle, a mosquito coil, and the remnants of a fiery fish curry between them. May had fallen asleep in the hammock, only her feet visible about the meeting that enveloped her. Sorry, the netting. I want to tell you a story, Maya. Before, when you sit here, I went into the room and I looked into your bag, and you have a gun, but you're not police, I think, and you're not a nakleng, a criminal either, I think. So I want to tell you my story. After that, you can stay or go, up to you. You can leave or you can help me, up to you. But you have to listen to my story first, and I need your help, Ka. Maya nodded from another world altogether. I'm 45 years old. I come from Khlong Tet, Bangkok. I was a student in Bangkok in the late 1970s. We had many problems with the military government at that time. So I came down here for time out, and I met a man. Boy, his nickname was Boy, because he looked like a boy. He was a young man from the island. So I fell in love with this boy and I stayed on the island and we married and we built bungalows for tourists. We made a restaurant. We sold ganja. We made parties for a few years. And then one day, about 10 years ago, a man came to the island, a farang, a very rich farang who had big company in the US. And this man, with some partners in the military, decided to build an airport on Kopangan on my husband's family's land the land of many other people, and a national park. He offered some money, some compensation, but my husband and I organized with other farmers here, like we did, I'm sorry, like we did in the 70s. We wanted to keep Kopangan beautiful. We made demonstrations on our land against the airport. She paused. Maya knew what was coming. The night contracted around them and the darkness made the candle between them flicker and almost faint. This man, he paid everyone, the, me the mayor, the police, and my husband, one day, five years ago, he drowned. Maya saw only sadness in Hom's face. She laughed with bitterness. My husband was a very good swimmer. After a long silence, Maya asked her, why are you telling me this? I'm not an assassin, I'm not a killer. She looked at him directly and without pity. The big man at the boat, he killed my husband. He works for the rich Farang. His name is Wutke. I think he is looking for you. I am sure. Maya said nothing for a long time. He looked out into the night, uncertain whether to leave this madness or stay. As soon as he escaped one trap, another opened. How could this man have a long connection to an island Maya was visiting to escape from this very same man? It didn't make any sense. He'd spoken to no one in Bangkok, to no one on the bus and only to home on the ferry. And this man, Wutke, appearing at the jetty couldn't be a coincidence. But Maya could not see any logic in what had happened. At least one of the parties looking for him was looking for him in places he'd never been to before he even arrived there. This Farang who wants to build the airport, what nationality is he? He's German. Wutke is German. Same, same. Same as you, Maya. The big man with the money is called Krieger. He's a famous Kuyai, a strong man, like a big man. He's in the news here sometimes. He owns many telephone companies, and he has so much money. Same, same like our Thailand prime minister. Rich man and very corrupt. Krieger owns one island not so far from here. It's in a national park, and people say that there are wild animals, a very dangerous animal island. 
there are tigers and big snakes, and he has a big house with place for a helicopter, a jetty, a speedboat, everything is there. You go there, you don't come back. That's what the Chao Lei, the sea gypsies say, who travel through the park sometimes. These rich people killed my husband. Four months. What is it you expect me to do then, Hom? She shrugged at him, a dark look on her face which switched to a bright smile in an instant. Why did you meet me on the boat? And why did I help you, Mr. Maya? And why is the man who killed my husband looking for you? Maybe it's magic. Maybe it's karma. Maybe it's lucky. Maybe it's not lucky. But you are here and now and you and I don't know how to explain and my English is not so good. You are just part of the story. I know I can feel it. Maya nodded. Me too. And I don't like it. So I think you don't come here to help me, but you come for another reason, and maybe now something will change for me. Because I miss my husband very much, and I have so much pain, and I have to hide it from my daughter all the time. And she will never see her father. She was too young. It's very hard. I don't like this rich Farang and these local people who only like the money and let the foreigners do what they want in my country, even kill our own people. I want to stop this man building the airport where my husband died. Stop destroying the island. I want to kill Rutke. That is my wish. Wow. That was really good. Again, I'm it was, uh, you know, I, I was actually, yeah, I, again, I, you know, I, I'm, you know, trying not to actually read while you're reading and stuff. And I, I get so caught up in the story and I'm like, okay, I have to, you know, look alive so that when he, uh, he stops, I can say something smart and, and I just want you to keep reading. Um, <laughs> that was really good. Um, you know, you are a, an author and you are, um, you know, a publisher as well. Um, you know, how do you find all the, how do you find the time to, to write? My day job is, a, I'm a journalist in my day job, so I, I write all the time anyway oh, for a living. Wow. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so writing writing novels and I also write non-fiction books um, it's just it's just part of the day it's one thing together fairly fairly smoothly wow um, you know uh, us writers we also like to read do you ever have do you get time to read anymore and, and if so who do you like to read um, yeah yeah I get time to read I mean I, I, every time I get on the train here or in a taxi or something I read and I read in the mm -hmm. evenings a little bit. At the moment, I'm reading some, some short stories by Raymond Chandler, actually, because um, just last week I read Poodle Springs, which is, the, which is um, a novel of which the first four, chapter were written, four chapters were written by Raymond Chandler, and then it was finished by someone else. And um, mm. I, I, didn't, I didn't really like it, to be honest. And, and so I thought, oh, I'll go back to the original Chandler and, and see how that is in comparison. And um, the short stories I'm reading are, are are way better, of course. Yeah, you know, I I'm finding that uh, it, you know, um, being involved in the the publishing aspect uh, of things that uh, you know, I read so much for for work that I I never have time to read for pleasure anymore. I have so many people, you know. You know, read my book. Did you read my book? I have this one friend who every time I, I you know, run across him, he's, did you finish my book yet? And no, I didn't. I, I, I don't. I don't even have time to read stuff that I want to read. Uh, so, um, I, I don't know how you find all the time. I, I really don't. Um, you know, yeah, but maybe if I wasn't napping. <laughs> I go through phases, I guess, where I, I read more or less for pleasure, and. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I travel a lot for my job, so um, because I'm on the road a lot of the time, that, that's when I find time to read. And actually, I don't have a smartphone, so that helps as well. <laughs> You're not, not uh, less distractions that way, right? Yes, because the only time I'm online is when I'm sitting in front of my computer, which is enough time already. But uh, when I'm out there that's or doing true. something, that I have no access to the internet, so that. Um, forces me to, or it gives me the opportunity to, to do other stuff like, like read books, you know? Mm -hmm. 
You know, as uh, I think that you know that the whole thing about being addicted to like, the internet and stuff and, and being online, I think that's a, a real thing. And uh, you know, just thinking about being cut off, you know, like if my phone were to be shut off or something, I would just freak out. But you know what? After you get through with the, the initial freak out, it's so peaceful and so quiet. So I, I kind of envy that. You know, I have gotten to you know James was talking about him. Uh, um, the app he has, and it you know it goes off you know all the time or whatever. And um, you know I have this thing I set my phone on on do not disturb, and that's amazing because uh, you know I never used to do that, so now it, it just doesn't disturb me. Which I have to say was a bad thing once because my son was trying to get a hold of me and he couldn't because my phone was set to do not disturb. So, which yeah that's his loss, but whatever. <laughs> He didn't really keep me. <laughs> no, it's one of those. I mean, we, we so, can start relying on these things now. It's just, you know, it's funny yeah. things. Like sometimes I, I put my phone down and sometimes, you know, you, you forget where you put it. And you just get this blind panic that you're going to miss something in the 30 <laughs> seconds it takes you to find your phone. And it is, it's, it's, it is like <laughs> a physical, palpable panic feeling. It's just like... No, this is wrong. And yeah, I remember back in the back in the good old days, but we didn't have anything. You know, if, if, so we, you know, I was out. I was in sales a lot. I worked, worked out on the road a lot, and you know, you, you phoned in the office like one well, into the office once a day, and that was it. Not now, you twenty four seven. You're in communication, which I don't think is always a good thing. To be honest with you, I really mm-hmm. don't. I I couldn't have got up to half of what I got up to then. Now. <laughs> right I, I, and but but I would say that it, it really is a personal choice and and we are you know we are obviously being conditioned by ourselves in a way to to be online all the time but um, I mean mm-hmm. I'm a journalist I can do I have I have a phone that makes phone calls and uh, gets text messages but it's not on the internet and uh, it's perfectly enough and. Um, when I when I am at home and I'm working, I'm often online, and then I can check my messages and stuff. But I'm not on WhatsApp or any of those um, other applications, and I I don't need it. And when I go, sometimes mm-hmm. I go to very remote places to work where there is no internet. And um, like last year, I was I think three weeks in one stretch where there wasn't any internet, and I didn't miss it. But then what I notice is when I come back to places. Where there is, uh, Online connection. I'm in it again straight away without any kind of hesitation, you know. Well, you know, the funny part about that is that, you know, I will um, message somebody and, you know, if they don't respond within, you know, you know, I say reasonable time, but for me that's, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Nice. I'm like, why are they not, you know, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah they're, you're, they're ignoring me. me. You're ignoring Why are you ignoring me? I yes. know. I'm terrible for that. Terrible for that. I know because. You know, I have my phone on me all the time, so I get a message and it pops right up. Mm-hmm. And of course, I don't have to respond if I don't want to, but I see it. You know, so I guess I just figure everybody else is the same way. And you know, for all I know, they could be in some remote part of the world. And, and but you know, but yeah. for me, are I'm like, already, it's been ten minutes. Where are they? Yeah. <laughs> or they may have a life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> James, James said earlier that um, that before there was mobile phones, uh, there was loads more things we could get away with. And um, <sighs> I, I, I think that the, the phone, of course, as the cameras in the street are, are just one more thing that uh, kind of supervises and controls us, and therefore he's completely right. I totally agree with that. And in a way, that's also what my novel, The Monsoon Ghost Image, is about, because it's about one photograph of... Um, of, of a scene of the American service rendition, uh, a high-value prisoner, and in the digital age where pictures can be very easily replicated, there, you know, in the old days there would have been a hunt for a negative, and there would have only been one negative and a few prints. But now, basically, you take a photo and it's out there, and it is absolutely unstoppable. And so, um, what James said earlier that you can't get away with stuff anymore is is true if you if you film yourself doing anything these days and it's of any interest to anybody it'll be on the internet at some point Mm -hmm. so be careful yeah 
I hate to say it, Tom, but we are out of time for our show. Um, and it, it went by way too fast. And um, you have to promise to come back and see us. No problem. So uh, I hope uh, if you're concerned about uh, online privacy, read my book, The Monsoon Ghost Image. Definitely. Where can we quickly, where can we find that, sir? Uh, we have a at website. The moment, the um, yes, there's the uh, Crime Web Press website, that's www.crimewebpress.com, or you can come to my website, which is www.tompartner.com. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm afraid uh, we, we have, uh, time has flown by, and um, it is that time, actually, where we have to say goodnight. Thank you very good much. Night, have a beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Tom, thank you. Good night, and good night, Christina.